We have previously discussed the importance of column chromatography and how to choose an eluent. In this video, we will demonstrate the proper lab technique that is critical for obtaining good separation. The first thing you want to do is carefully clamp the column, making sure that the column is vertical in both directions. The next step is to prepare the silica column. Start by adding a small amount of solvent to the column and opening the stopcock. This will remove air bubbles from the glass frit. Make sure that you close the stopcock so there is still solvent above the frit. Next, weigh out the silica into a beaker. It is very important that this is done in the hood because silica is an inhalation hazard. Add the solvent that you will be using to run the column. Swirl the slurry to make sure that all the silica is solvated. Using a powder funnel, pour as much as possible of the slurry into the column. Now add more solvent to the beaker. Once again, stir the solution and pour it into the column. Open the stopcock and collect the solvent into an Erlenmeyer flask. You can use the solvent and continue slurring the silica until all of the silica has been transferred to the column. You can use a pipette to clean the sides of the column. After you have started preparing the column, be careful that you do not let the solvent fall below the top of the silica. A dry column can develop cracks which will reduce the separation that you obtain. Samples are generally prepared in the solvent in which you will be running the column. It is very important that the sample is fully dissolved and that the sample is as concentrated as possible. In addition to using your pipette to dissolve the sample as well as possible, you may need to use a pipette filter to remove any undissolved material. Now you are ready to load your sample onto the column. First you want to drain the solvent to the top of the silica. Second, you want to carefully pipette the solution down the side of the column. After you have added all of the sample, you want to carefully drain the sample to the top of the silica. Use an additional pipette full of solvent to rinse the side of the column, but not the flask from which the sample came. Once again, drain the solution to the top of the column. Repeat this process over and over again until when you see additional solvent, the solvent remains clear. When the solvent is clear, you can gently fill the column with solvent. There are several things that students have done wrong at this step. The hardest to avoid is applying too much pressure when adding the sample, which leaves a dent in the silica gel. This will lead to contamination in your final product. In addition, you want to make sure that the solvent level is at the top of the silica gel when you add your solvent. Second, if the sample that you loaded was too dilute, you will have a broad band when it is loaded. Finally, if you do not load your sample completely onto the column before you fill the column with solvent, you will have a broad band of sample. If the same amount of sample is loaded in a broader band, there will be reduced separation. the sample is loaded, you are able to begin collecting fractions into test tubes. If your samples are colored, it is easy to see the progress of the samples down the column. You want to collect the solvent into test tubes, and when you are near your desired compound, you want to reduce the amount of solvent that you are collecting in each tube. Make sure that you keep track of the order of the tubes. While you are collecting fractions, watch the solvent level and add solvent as needed to make sure that the solvent level is always above the level of the silica gel. Once you have been collecting samples, you will need to determine which of these test tubes contain the pure compound that you desire. To do this, you will obtain TLC plates on different fractions. Begin by spotting every fourth fraction, starting a few tubes before where you expect your compound to have started. Develop this plate.
When you are confident that your compound is off the column, open the stopcock to allow the rest of the solvent to drain out of the column. After this step is completed, you can put the dry silica waste into the waste container.